Hey everybody, we are packing up the dog and headed to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. This is the rental property that my family stayed in. It was a family trip and the house was right on the beach, which was really cool. The ground floor had this bunk bedroom, a full bathroom, and then it went out into a living area with a ping pong table, which was on top of a pool table. And then there was also a hot tub and grill out on the back deck, which we had some good times in. On the second floor, there was a bedroom that was attached to another bedroom in between a shared bathroom that was a full bath with a shower and everything. One side had a big balcony that you could see the water on. This room was the master room, so it was also on that balcony but had its own full bathroom attached to it. The top floor was the living floor. There was a half bath, a kitchen, dining area, living room area, and the best part of the top floor was the view of the ocean. It had a large, large deck out front and then you could see the water for miles. There was one house in front of us, but it was a lot shorter. So we had a great view of the ocean the whole time, which was really, really beautiful. This was a pickleball court we found at Dowdy Park and it wasn't the best shape. So we ended up playing at a tennis court, pickleball court. After that, we went to Wu Casa Kitchen it was in downtown Nags Head. They had kind of a mix of foods, but they had locally sourced fish. So I ended up getting this poke bowl with the fresh caught tuna and it was amazing. As we were eating, we made about an hour drive out to Cape Hatter's Lighthouse, which is on a national seashore. So the drive out there was a lot of bridges through different little islands of the Outer Banks and there is just houses everywhere so this is the cape hatters light station it was actually moved from its original location to this spot to preserve it the lighthouse is beautiful they also moved all of the outbuildings so this is where the people lived when they took care of the lighthouse and that second building is actually a museum now with loads of information about the lighthouse itself this is one of the beaches that we had access to out on Cape Hatter's National Seashore. As you can see, you can drive out on the beach in the Outer Banks and loads of people do it as they're fishing. It was super windy the whole time we were there, so we got some good kite flying in, which was pretty fun. And at night, we did ice cream almost every night. Booty Treats was our personal favorite, and I had a milkshake this night. The next day, we went to the Wright Brothers National Monument. So this is where they actually flew the plane. There is a really nice museum. And then the hill in this picture here was actually moved back a little bit from where it originally was because of erosion. But that is where they flew the plane off of. This was a replica of the plane. And here you can see all four of the very first flights marked by stones. And then this was on top of the hill. This is the actual monument that was made. And then on top of the hill, you can also see where they flew the planes. And it was a really cool view of like the ocean and then all the houses that are there now in the Outer Banks. And that is just the direct line. So this kind of shows the rail that they were pushing the plane off of and where everyone was exactly when the first flight went up. This was the beach right outside of where we were staying. So we did a couple long walks on this beach. The sand was pretty soft, so it was a tougher walk, but the beach was really pretty despite the bad weather. The water actually wasn't terrible, which was surprising. And Canyon obviously loves walks and loves being on the beach trying to chase the birds. It was pretty funny. So I decided that even though it was cold and rainy, I had to go in the ocean. I'm underwater Tory, it's gotta happen. So here you can see me braving the water. It actually wasn't bad temperature wise, like I said. The undertow was actually the scary part. So the currents were pretty bad and I just kind of did a dip and got out. That night we went to Surf and Spoon, which was more of a Froyo based rest or not restaurant but like ice cream place and it was really really trendy really cute inside very modern looking very beach vibes and it was very very busy everything was delicious they even had these little ice cream sandwiches that i ended up getting 
to go and had the next day and it was so good loved the ice cream there this was a fun little brew through where you can drive through and buy booze and stay in your car so we had to go through that it was really fun we were having a pretty good time and it was a very unique little spot so we loved that the next day we were driving out to Roanoke Island where the North Carolina aquarium is it was so rainy we figured this would be a good day to go to the aquarium they had really cool exhibits here this is meatloaf the puffer fish that welcomes you when you come into the aquarium and a lot of the exhibits were very like open very nature based they were really trying to showcase the wildlife that is actually in north carolina and things you would find there so i thought they did a really good job of just showing the natural habitat instead of everything just being in fish tanks so there was a lot of snakes alligators turtles that kind of thing that's in their natural habitat there was an otter over in that pen and then this really cool looking albino alligator was in the tank right there you can see him close up here he was an interesting little dude over here we had a bunch of turtles which I love so these are like the wetland type of turtles and the aquarium did a really good job of having these screens everywhere where you could see what fish were in each tank and then more information about them so these were by almost every tank which was kind of a really cool feature this was Atlas he was a snapper that was rescued and then these tanks here are the sea turtle rehabilitation center so that guy in the back there he's a 400 pound loggerhead turtle this girl close up she is 250 and these are little green baby turtles that you would see like on the reefs if you're swimming those are kind of a more common one there all these turtles will be re-released this guy had a shark attack and he is in a tank and stays there these guys were just these really skinny, cool looking fish. They had this boat type of exhibit to show the seahorses. There was some lobsters in there, but everything was in this like wooden boat to try to make it more cool. This lobster was so awesome. He looked fake. There was some lionfish here, a couple other fish, but these were all in this like backlit neon boat type of exhibit, which was fun. They had petting tanks for the stingrays, so we got to touch some stingrays, which was really interesting. They were pretty slimy. They also had a touch tank with like hermit crabs and sea urchins. I did not touch anything in there, but I wanted to showcase that little area. Over here was the jellyfish exhibit, which was really cool. Jellyfish are so interesting to look at. So that was fun. And then of course, the very last thing that you, we came across is their massive aquarium tank. So this had all the sharks in it and loads of fish. The divers were actually cleaning it at this time, but you can see how many people were there because of the weather. And look at these sharks. I mean, everyone loves the big tank at the aquarium. And this guy was definitely the star of the show, just swimming around, chomping his little shark teeth. So he was cool to see. Outside of the aquarium, they actually had a pier and we saw some dolphins, which was super fun. We ended the trip with a family dinner out at Miller's Waterfront Restaurant and we got seafood. The restaurant was really cute inside. There was hush puppies. I got scallops. This was a swordfish dish and then a mixed seafood dish. And we headed home and got upgraded to first class. Thanks for watching.